Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. So today we are back for another declutter. We are gonna go ahead and do concealers and setting powders. I figure I would start off with concealers first because that's what you typically apply at first before setting powders. Before we get started, don't forget to upload every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday for you guys. If you like this video while you're watching it, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. It really does help my channel out. And other than that, if you're excited and you wanna see my concealer and setting powder declutter, then let's go ahead and get started. So I recently asked on my community tab if you wanted to see my concealer declutter in general because it's just a little more boring of a topic. You know, like eyeshadow palettes and foundations, blushes, bronzers, highlights, those are all just a little bit more, I don't know, entertaining to watch. Um, And you guys, a bunch of you guys voted yes, you do want to see my concealer declutter. Also, I had a subscriber on there say it's a good idea to just go ahead and combine concealers setting powders and then setting sprays. And I was like, yes, great idea. And I was going to do that until I pulled out all of my concealers and all of my setting powders, which you will see in a you know few minutes. And there's just, it's just too much. It's too much to do all in one video. Those Alex Nine doors, I'm telling you, they are deceptive. You do not know how much makeup you own until you actually pull it all out of the drawers. So I'm just doing concealers and setting powders here today. I probably won't even do setting sprays, honestly. I really don't have that many. So. We're gonna start off with concealers today. So the first one is going to be my Kosas Revealer Concealer. I have the shade 1.5C. As you can see, I love this concealer. It is definitely well-loved. I am scraping it to try to finish it up. It's so stinking good. This shade is a little bit deep for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a lighter shade in the Sephora sale coming up. But I love this and I'm definitely keeping it because it's almost gone. I'm about to use it all up. Also, I'm sorry my nails are always disgusting in these types of videos. I just I just cannot get my life together. My nails chip so easily. I don't want to pay to get them done. They're just not the prettiest things ever. So I, I'm sorry for that. Another one I'm definitely going to go ahead and keep is my Dose of Colors Meet You Hue Concealer. I have the shade 03 Fair. As you can see, it's another one I am scraping to finish. I've actually been mixing together this one with the Kosas because the Kosas is too dark. This one is too light, but together they are perfect. Also going to be keeping this because I, it's almost gone. I'm gonna about, about to finish it up and it's going to feel so good to finish up a concealer. <laughs> Alrighty, what I'm going to go ahead and declutter is my e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer, but I'm decluttering this shade specifically. It's in the shade Fair Rose. It's just a little bit too light for me. I can make it work in the winter time. However, it is just is a little bit too light for me. So I'm going to go ahead and declutter this one and see if a friend wants it. I do like this formulation though. So it's more the shade than the actual concealer type, if that makes sense. But yeah, it's a little light. So I'm going to see if a friend wants this instead. One I'm going to go ahead and keep is my Huda Beauty the Overachiever Concealer. This is in the shade Meringue. I'm going to go ahead and pull this one as well. It's the same exact concealer, but this is in the shade Marshmallow. So I'm actually going to go ahead and keep both of these. I really like this concealer. It's thick, but it's nice and full coverage, and it tends to blend out pretty nicely. I have to be a little bit careful with applying too much or it being a little bit drying on me, but for the most part, I really, really like this. This is my deeper summer shade, and this is my lighter winter shade. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and keep both of these. Another one I'm gonna keep is my Anastasia Beverly Hills, and this is their Magic Touch Concealer, I believe. Yeah, Magic Touch Concealer. I have the shade two. So I actually haven't gotten a chance to use this too much. It's a little bit newer of a purchase for me, and since I've been so so focused on finishing up my dose of colors and my Kosas concealers I haven't been using this very often however the couple of times I have tried it I actually really like it it seems to be nice and full coverage pretty hydrating wears well under my eyes and it's essentially brand spanking new to me so I'm definitely gonna keep this one alrighty what I'm gonna go ahead and let go is my rare beauty and this is their I don't know what it's called, but it's just their concealer. It's in the shade 130N. So if you caught my foundation declutter, you saw that I uh, went ahead and decluttered my Rare Beauty foundation. If you did not catch my foundation declutter, well, I'm gonna have a link in the eye and down below for you so you can watch it in case you want to. I just, for some reason, cannot make these two products work out for me. The foundation doesn't look good on me and I really don't love the concealer either. So, going to go ahead and declutter this. My friend who said she wants the Rare Beauty foundation, I'll see if she also wants to try the concealer at the same time. So, this is gonna be a declutter. Another one I'm gonna go ahead and keep is my ColourPop Pretty Fresh Creamy Concealer. I have the shade of Fair 20N. This is a pretty decent concealer. I wouldn't say it's my favorite concealer ever, but it definitely has way more coverage than I thought it was going to. When I purchased it on sale at Ulta, it's also a pretty great shade match for me. It's nice and hydrating, so I'm gonna keep this one. What I'm gonna go ahead and also keep is this e.l.f. 16 Hour Camo Concealer, but this is in the shade Medium Peach. So I like to use this one in the summertime when I'm self tanning. So this is a pretty decent shade match on me when I am 
tanning, like I said. So I'm going to keep this one. I'm obviously not going to get very much use out of it coming up um, in the next couple months because we are heading into fall and winter. Um, we're not heading it. We're in, we're in fall. We're heading into winter very, very soon. Um, so yeah, I will keep this for next summer, but honestly, I think I'm just going to keep it next summer. And if I don't use it up, I'm gonna have to go ahead and get rid of it because it is pretty old, but I'll keep it for now. I might as well go ahead and get my third and final e.l.f. camo concealer out of the way. So this one is in the shade light peach. So this is the one that actually matches me. So again, I'm going to go ahead and keep this one. I do like this concealer. I definitely liked it more a couple years ago than now. Um, I will say that it is pretty matte. It can be slightly drying on me, but it's very, very full coverage um, and I do enjoy it. And it's only like $6. So going to be a keep. One I'm going to go ahead and get rid of is this Cloven Hollow Concealer. I don't remember the name of it, but I have the shade 01. It's just not the best shade match for me, if I'm being honest. It's a little bit orangey on me. I will say every time I use it, I am more impressed with it than I think I'm going to be. Like it always has more coverage than I remember and blends out nicely. But again, the shade is a little off and also it's pretty old. They sent this to me in PR, I want to say a couple years ago. So I actually don't even think I'm going to pass this along to a friend. I think I'm going to go ahead and toss this because I just think it's too old, unfortunately. Another keep is going to be my Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. I have the shade at 12 in Fair Neutral. This is just the normal version of the concealer. I like this. It's shape tape. It's a little bit drying and it's thick and full coverage, but I do enjoy wearing this on my under eyes when I use it. So I am going to go ahead and keep this one. But the one I'm going to declutter is my Ultra Creamy Shape Tape. So again, I have the shade 12 in. This is supposed to be the creamy, more hydrating version of Shape Tape. And I'm not kidding you, this one is more drying on my under eyes than the original version. And I don't understand how that happened, but it did. But like I said, for this being the ultra creamy and it's supposed to be the more hydrating one of the two, on me, it's definitely not. So I'm gonna declutter this and see if a friend wants it. One I'm going to keep is my Hourglass. This is their Vanish Concealer. I have the shade Birch. I like this. I do have to be careful to not over apply it. If I use too much of it, it's very, very thick and gets a little cakey under my eyes. So if I go ahead with the doe foot and I just add like one little dot on each under eye, then it really does blend out nicely. It's very full coverage. It's pretty thick, but if I'm careful, not too, too thick. And I like it. It's a good concealer. Another one I'm 1 million percent going to keep is my NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. I have the shade Light 2 Vanilla. So this is the most perfect concealer for spot concealing, as you can see. I have definitely been going hard on this concealer the past couple of months since I bought it. I love this. It's perfect for concealing acne, redness, anything like that. You would have to pry this from my hands. I definitely love it, and I'm definitely uh, not getting rid of it. Another one I'm going to go ahead and declutter is the Catrice Liquid Camouflage High Coverage Concealer. So this is in the shade 007 Natural Rose. I got this into me in PR and I just really don't like this concealer. It's a pretty thin formula, which is nice, but I don't remember it having a ton of coverage for me. And it was pretty drying on my under eyes. And also this shade is just a little bit too deep for me. So I don't really, I guess I'll see if a friend wants this, but I personally do not love this and I'm definitely going to declutter it. One I'm going to keep is my Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer. I have the shade 0 in. I'm not gonna lie, I was expecting to love this way more than I actually do. So I went ahead and picked this up in the last Sephora sale earlier in the year, and I don't know, it just like doesn't perform as well as I thought it was going to. This shade is a little bit deep for me, even though it's their lightest shade. I'm not sure what's going on with Dior's um, shade range to where their 0N is just a little bit too deep for me in everything. This and the foundation. Also, this just doesn't really have as much coverage as I was hoping. It's not as hydrating as I thought it was going to be. Is it the worst concealer ever? No, definitely not. I'm definitely going to use it up, especially since it's Dior and it was bougie and it was pricey, even with the 20% off with the sale, but not my favorite, but definitely going to still keep because it's Dior, man. Like I can't get rid of this. <laughs> Another easy keep is my Shiseido. This is the Synchro Skin Self-Refreshing Concealer, I believe is what it's called, and I have the shade 101 Fair. I love this concealer. It has the most interesting doe foot applicator. It's like oddly shaped, um, which is just, I don't know, interesting, but it just goes on like any other doe foot. This is such a lovely concealer. It's very full coverage and it's not super thick, but it definitely is opaque. It blends in very nicely. And the thing that I love the most about it is this creases the least on me than any of these other concealers. It still creases because I have under eye lines and everything creases, but this creases the least and it's a great shade match for me. I love this. I'm definitely keeping it. Another keep is going to be my Benefit Boing Cakeless Concealer. I have the shade number one. I'm not going to lie. This just, it's just a little bit orangey on me, but I can make it work with like powder and foundation and all that. It's a nice thin formula. 
um, and it has decent coverage, but it's definitely not my favorite concealer ever. I did go ahead and get this half off during the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty last year, I believe. It's adorable that it looks like a little pencil. My ex-teacher heart loves this, but it's not my favorite. But again, it, I don't dislike it enough to get rid of it, so I am going to go ahead and keep it. Another keep is my Clover by Cloven Hollow. This is their camo cover concealer. This is in the shade 3. I don't love the applicator of this. It's one that you have to squeeze out, but it's not the end of the world. I do do remember liking this I've only used it once or twice but the couple of times I used it I do remember liking it I remember it being a pretty decent shade match on me um, and yeah I liked it so I'm gonna definitely keep this and keep giving it a go another easy keep is my Haley's Beauty rewind blurring full coverage concealer I have this shade fair neutral this is one again it's like the Huda Beauty one I actually didn't show you that applicator but it's the same it's like this metal tip applicator I don't love this I just squeeze it out on the back of my hand and then go from there but this concealer is lovely it is full coverage it is hydrating it blends in so nicely it doesn't crease too too badly on me it doesn't fade throughout the day i genuinely love this concealer i love it definitely keeping another one i'm going to go ahead and get rid of is my milani conceal and perfect Longwear concealer this is pretty new to me and i'm kind of surprised that i'm going to go ahead and get rid of it i have the shade 110 nude ivory i just never want to reach for this like ever i just i don't know it's not a bad concealer but I don't ever think to reach for it and I don't ever want to use it. So I'd rather go ahead and give it to a friend while it's fresh and they can get some love and some use out of it. Another concealer I'm going to go ahead and keep is this one right here. You guys, I got this from Octoly a while ago and I really don't know what it is. I think it's a concealer that maybe hadn't released yet when I got it. I don't know if Art Cosmetics is the brand. I know Tarte is not the brand. That was more of the um, shade match for me, but... Yeah, I really, I really don't know what's going on with this. Um, I don't know like the brand or anything, and I've only tried it a couple times, and I didn't love it. But I am gonna go ahead and keep it and see if I can get some more use out of it. Alrighty, so the next one is the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define Infinite Longwear Coverage Concealer. Whew, I have the shade C1. This is a huge component. I honestly don't like how massive it is. But I actually think I am going to keep this. I went ahead and decluttered the foundation in my foundation declutter because it was just a little bit drying on me. This one is not as drying and it definitely does have full coverage, I would say. It says that it's crease proof. It's definitely not. But I like this way more than the foundation and I definitely will hopefully get more use out of it in the future. Alrighty, and I've got two more. I actually think I'm going to go ahead and declutter both. This one is the CoverGirl True Blend Undercover Concealer. I have the shade... Um, oh, L100 Fair Porcelain. I just don't like this. I was hoping that I would love it. A lot of people I feel like do love this concealer, but I don't know. Every time I use it, I just feel like it's really dry and cakey and crepey and just looks terrible on my under eyes. So going to pass this along to a friend. And my last concealer is this Ilia one right here. It is their True Skin Serum Concealer. So actually, you know what? I'm going to keep this. I am going to end up keeping this. This is in the shade Arrowroot. It's another one that I feel like every time I use it, I'm surprised by how much I like it when I do use it. And it's also a little bit deeper of a shade. So this will be good for me to use in the summer um, next year when I am self tanning. So I changed my mind. I am going to keep this one. Alrighty. So here is going to go ahead and be the concealers that I am keeping. There is 19. I know that that is still way too much concealer for one person to have. However, a couple of these shades are ones that I really can only use during the summertime because they're a little bit deeper. These two are almost gone. Like I'm going to finish them up any moment now. And the other ones I just feel good about. They're ones that I enjoy using um, that I wanted to keep. So those are going to be the 19 that I am keeping. Alrighty guys, and here are going to be the seven concealers that I am decluttering. I feel good about this pile of concealers. They're ones that I'm really not reaching for. I really don't love them on my under eyes, either formulation wise or color wise. So I feel good. I'm going to see if some friends or coworkers or family members want these babies. So now that we are done with concealers, let's move it along to my setting powders. This is what I mean when I say that the Alex 9 drawers are deceptive. I had legitimately no idea that I had this many powders. I don't even like press setting powders. Why do I have so many of them? I don't know. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and jump in. I'm just going to grab at random. So the first one that I know I can go ahead and keep is my Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. I love this. This is my second 
compact that I am going through. It's just a really great everyday setting powder. It is beautiful and matte but not drying and it's lovely. So I love this and I'm definitely keeping. Now the one I'm keeping that I'm on my second compact is my Anastasia Beverly Hills Loose Setting Powder in Vanilla. This setting powder is the one that makes my face look the most smooth. I swear when I use this, my whole face is just completely smoothed out and perfected. It's a little pricey. It's like $38. I don't know why ABH thought that that price point was fine um, because that's a little outrageous in my personal humble opinion. However, I've gotten both compacts on sale, so definitely get it on sale, but this is a stunning setting powder. I love this. Whenever I use this one up, I'll probably buy another one. So stinking good definitely keeping. One I'm going to go ahead and get rid of, sadly, is the Range Beauty Smooth Out Translucent Setting Powder. So this is in the shade Light. That is a little bit too deep for my skin, even though it is light. And I just remember this not setting my face how I liked it. It was a little bit drying, and I just unfortunately don't love this on my skin. So I am going to declutter this. Another one I'm 1 million percent keeping, and another one that I'm on my second compact is my Maybelline Fit Me in the shade 05 Fair. This is like the best drugstore setting powder I personally have found. It is so lovely. I've recommended this to so many people at Ulta when they're just looking for a good go-to setting powder and it's only like $10. It sets your face nicely, it's not drying, and it comes in like, I wanna say eight or 10 different shades so you can definitely find one that matches your skin tone. So great, maybe we knocked it out of the park with this, definitely keeping. Another one I'm going to keep because it is so stinking expensive and bougie is the Hourglass Mineral Veil Setting Powder. I did go ahead and get this on sale on their website last year, but it was still expensive, you guys, it was still expensive. This packaging is just very luxe. It's all around nice, like bougie experience when you are using this. I also really like that this is the least drying powder that I feel like I own in my collection. It's beautiful on the skin. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely keeping. Another one I'm going to keep is my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish, but that's not because I love it. It's just because it's almost gone. So I have talked about this powder before on my channel. I really honestly don't love it. I feel like it's a little bit drying. It oxidizes on my under eyes. It's a little bit too deep for me, even though it is the lightest one. But as you can see, I have mega pan in it. Um, how I have been using it up and am going to continue to use it all the way up is I set my MAC paint pot with this like every single time I do my makeup um, so I'm gonna keep it for that reason but this definitely will not be a repurchase and I definitely don't think it is worth the price. Another one I'm gonna go ahead and declutter is this Wet n Wild bronzer. I don't know how in the world Wet n Wild ever thought that this was a bronzer, but here we are. This is in the shade Reserve Your Cabana. I bought this because of Kelly Strack. She uses this as a setting powder though, not as a bronzer obviously, because who would this be a bronzer for? I'm like the fairest of the fair and it's would never work for me as a bronzer. However, I failed to take into consideration that Kelly Strack is a lot more tan than me. So this works on her as a setting powder and it does not work on me as a setting powder. It's too deep and dark. So I'm gonna see if one of my friends wants this instead. I am gonna keep my Huda Beauty. This is her Easy Bake Loose Baking and Setting Powder. This is in the shade Pound Cake. I did go ahead and declutter my other one that I own from her, but I don't remember the shade now. So a while back, I did go ahead and get rid of that one, but this is a really great powder. It's a little bit thicker of a powder, so it can be slightly drying I just lightly dust my face with it when I am using it but I'm telling you like this powder will last me forever there's so much in here and you need the tiniest little amount I will say it does have that Huda Beauty smell that it's very perfumey um, it doesn't necessarily bother me but I like this I think it's a good powder I think it makes my skin look pretty so I'm gonna keep it another one I'm gonna keep is this one size this is just their translucent setting powder so I actually have only gotten a chance to use this once so I really don't know my thoughts on it if I'm being honest um, one of my friends on my Instagram account Duwani loves this powder so I picked it up on her recommendation um, and unfortunately I've only used it once I think I remember liking it the one time I used it so I'm gonna keep it because I want to form more solid opinions on it oh another one I'm on my second compact the beauty baby flower powder. I really, really love this stuff. It's in the shade Oat Translucent. I will say it's a pretty small compact, so I would definitely only get it if you can get it on sale. I wouldn't pay full price for this, but it's a really lovely powder. Again, kind of like the other ones I'm keeping. It just kind of sets my face down nicely. It doesn't get too dry or anything like that. Um, and yeah, I really like this. Definitely keeping. One I'm going to go ahead and declutter is this one right here by Thrive Cosmetics. This is their... Um, filtered effects, soft focus, translucent matte setting powder. Okay, I really just don't love this powder. Unfortunately, it's pretty drying on my face whenever I use it. Um, and that's pretty much the main reason I don't love it. I'm so bummed out. I've only tried two things from Thive Cosmetics. I tried this and their Liquid Lash Extension Mascara. And both of them I didn't love, which is such a bummer. But I am going to go ahead and see if one of my friends 
wants to give it a go instead. Another one I'm going to be keeping is my Essence Brighten Up Banana Powder. This is my second compact of this as well. As you can see, it is well loved. It is used and abused. It's almost gone, so I thought about just going ahead and calling it an empty and getting rid of it, but there is quite a bit left on these sides here. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and keep this. I do like to use this as a brightening up powder, like it says, under my eyes, under my contour, just to really sharpen and clean everything up. So I love this, and it's only a couple dollars. Highly recommend if you have not gave it a go yet. All right, went ahead and moved them all closer so I could get them in the shop better and reach for them better. The next one is the Dior Powder No Powder. So I ended up picking up the shade one in. It is a little bit dark for me, and as you can see, I have a really hard trouble getting hard pan on this, and I don't understand why. I don't understand why. It's a little bit deep of a shade for me, which was kind of my fault. I went back between the zero in and the one in, and then I went ahead and picked up one in. I picked this up off of Samantha March's recommendation, like I'm sure a ton of us have. <laughs> and it's not the worst powder ever, but I just don't love it on my skin. It makes my skin, I don't even know how to explain it. Like it gives it a little bit of a sheen to it, which is nice, but then again, it almost looks oily by the end of the day. Like it doesn't set it enough. How I've been liking to use this is just a finishing powder, or if I go, too hard on my blush and bronzer. I will go over them with this to kind of settle it down. But again, there's like hard pan and it's pricey. And I just, I, I personally don't recommend this. I'm gonna keep it because like the concealer, it's Dior and it was very expensive. Um, but yeah, definitely not my favorite and definitely don't recommend it. Another one I'm going to keep is my Jaclyn Cosmetics. This is their brightening and setting palette. This is the lightest one, you guys. I love this palette. As you can see, I have pan in this shade. It is such a good palette to set my under eyes with. I just love how my under eyes look when I use this. But yeah, I just think it's great. I think it makes my under eyes look beautiful and 1 million percent keeping. Ugh, I don't know what to do about this one. This is the Cody Airspun and this is the one that's the naturally neutral. So this had been sitting in my drawer forever like i'm not kidding you probably over a year and i finally pulled it out and used it again a couple weeks ago in my throwback thursday video i did and i'm not gonna lie my face looked stunning like it my face looks so smooth and beautiful using this powder and i that's what i remember loving about it but the scent on this you got oh, oh my gosh i just got it in my throat even just opening it up for that one little second the scent on this is so incredibly strong it literally smells like old lady perfume and it stinks because it lingers like i when i tried this powder in that video a couple weeks back like i'm probably two hours after i applied my makeup i literally had mike get up close to my face and smell <laughs> smell my face and he was like what is that smell i was like see exactly you can still smell it so i think i'm gonna keep this because i can't deny how beautiful my skin looks with this on but why, Cody, why does this have to have this scent? I'm so, so stinking bummed. It's so strong, but I'm telling you, I look flawless when I use it, so I am keeping it. <laughs> Another one I'm gonna keep is my Jason Wu Ready Set Matte Powder. This is probably the most mattifying of the setting powders that I own right now, but it's not drying. Like it's matte and sets your face down nicely, but it doesn't dry my face out or make it look weird or anything like that. So yeah, I'm glad I bought this and tried it. And whenever I want my skin to look extra matte, or I'm going in with a more dewy foundation. This is the perfect setting powder to pair it with. So I'm gonna keep this. Alrighty, the e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder. This powder and I have had a pretty tumultuous relationship so far together. I have the shade Light. So I hated this at first. I did, I, okay, that hate's a strong word. I didn't hate it. But I really did not like it or understand the hype behind this powder at first. And then it took me having it for like a couple months and using it quite a few times to realize how stunning this powder is. It really truly, Halo Glow is the perfect name for it. It truly does give your skin a beautiful ethereal glow all over without making it look oily or anything like that. It sets your face down, but doesn't get rid of the glow. I love this, definitely keeping. Alrighty, another one that I am on the fence about. This is the Haley's Beauty Retouch Soft Focus Setting Powder. I don't really want to keep this, but I am going to keep it only because I've only used it a couple times. A couple of times I've used it though, I really have not enjoyed it. I've heard from so many YouTubers that this is one of the most like smoothing powders they've ever used on their face, and I personally don't get that reaction to it. It's one of those like yellowy banana powders as well, so it is a little bit deep on my skin, but again, I've only used it like one or two times, so I need to try it a couple more times to fully 
gain my thoughts on it. So I reluctantly am keeping this. Another one I'm going to reluctantly keep is this Neutrogena Color Correcting Compact. So this is just one that's supposed to be like a CC powder that's supposed to like color correct because it has the like yellow and green to it. I'm not gonna lie, I've only used this once and I really don't love it, but I am in an ongoing sponsorship with them and I do have to post about this a couple more times in the next like month or two. So I am going to keep it for those reasons, um, but I really don't love this. Everything else I've tried from them sent me this and two color correcting concealers and then their CC coverage foundation. I love all three of the other things, but this one was a no-go for me. So I'm gonna keep it because of that sponsorship, like I said, um, but I don't love this and after that, I'll probably declutter it. Another one I'm gonna keep is my number seven Lift and Luminate Triple Action Finishing Powder. I have the shade Light. I'm not a huge pressed powder kind of gal, um, but this isn't too terrible. I am going to keep it, like I said. It's, it's all right. I use it to set my under eyes and then my face every once in a while. I definitely don't reach for it as much as I should. However, I feel like once my Charlotte Tilbury powder is gone, this will kind of be its replacement with setting my MAC Paint Pot. Um, it, it doesn't seem to be drying or anything like that. I'm just not a pressed powder kind of girl, but I am going to keep this. Another one I'm going to go ahead and get rid of is the Bare Minerals Original Mineral Veil, but this is the press version of it. This is in translucent. I just really don't love this. I got this sent to me in PR through Influencer. It's just like a translucent one but it's white and honestly it's pretty drying on my skin when I've used it and it really didn't give me enough oomph and it didn't set my face enough so yeah I just don't really love this so I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this alrighty I've got two more honestly I don't really know what to do with either one of these I really don't want to keep either one I don't think but I feel bad because the Essence one is so new to me. I just bought it for my full face of Essence that I did a couple weeks back. I have the Fair Shade. I remember not hating this in that video, but I don't love it either. I do think I'm going to keep this though because I've only used it that one time um, in that video. So I'm going to keep it and again form more thoughts on it, but it's definitely not my favorite. And then the Too Faced Peach Perfect Powder. I don't know what to do about this because this is not available anymore. You cannot get it anymore. Um, I just have the translucent one. This was supposed to be the most blurring setting powder ever. That is what Casey Holmes said, which I know everything works different for everyone. Like I'm not mad at Casey Holmes, but she loves this powder and she kind of really made me want to pick it up. She says it's like super, super blurring and mattifying, but not drying. And I kind of just don't really find that to be the case. I definitely find this to be a little bit drying on me personally. And it does have that peach scent and you can smell the peach scent, like it is strong. So actually, I do think I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this and see if a friend wants it instead. All right, so here is all of the powders I'm going to be keeping. There are 18 of them. I know that's a lot of powder. However, I said this in my foundation declutter and I really do mean this. I'm not going to declutter just to declutter and have like a crazy title of like getting rid of half my concealers. No more powder, you know what I mean? Like I am truly only going to declutter things that I want to get rid of um, that I'm not using or I think a friend will love a little bit more than me. So I, I feel kind of good about this collection. Obviously, there are quite a few of them that I'm like on the fence about that I just haven't like tried enough that I want to, you know, gain more thoughts on them and all of that. And then some of these are tried and trues that I truly do love that I literally would never get rid of. So here are all the ones I'm keeping. Again, 18 of them. I feel good about this though. I feel good about this little pile here. And these are gonna go ahead and be the five powders that I am decluttering. Again, I feel good about this. These truly are powders that I really don't reach for that I do think one of my friends or family members can get a lot more love out of. So that was it, you guys. That was my concealer and setting powder declutter. I hope you enjoyed this while you're watching. Definitely be on the lookout for quite a few more declutters coming up in the future. I'm gonna do pretty much every other category. So if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much, you're awesome, I love you. Please subscribe if you have not yet, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye, guys.